Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for all those that have joined us. Uh, we welcome you to today's session in Trillium Flow Technologies Technical Webinar Series. My name is Graham Ellis, and I'm the Valve Product Director for Trillium Flow Technologies UK. And today I'm going to be joined by my colleague Sanka. Sanka, could you just quickly introduce yourself? Hello, hello everyone. My name is Sanket Walimbe. I'm the Technical Development Manager at Trillium Flow Technologies UK. Thank you, Sanket. So our presentation today will focus on control valve design improvements for molten salt applications. Um, so throughout the presentation, you'll be able to uh, ask any questions. And at the end of the presentation, uh, we will go through and hopefully we'll be able to provide you any answers um, if you so need some questions answering. So um, you should be able to find that Q&A section um, in the Zoom call that we're in uh, today. So uh, a quick overview of Trillium Flow Technologies brand portfolio. Our uh, product brands uh, names are synonymous within the pump and valve industry. We've pumped brands Bergman, Flowway, Gabionetti, Rotorjet, Wemco and WSP. And from our valve products, uh, we've got Atwood and Morel isolation and check valves, triple offset butterfly valves, Hiller and auto torque actuators, Batley butler fly valves, Blakeborough control and choke valves, Hopkinson's uh, isolation products, uh, and Saracen safety valves, and uh, recently added a red point. So on the right, uh, of the picture, we can visualize Trillium's global presence uh, with a supply chain that spans the globe. Our key manufacturing and service centers are located across the world in Canada, China, France, India, Italy, South Korea, UK, and the US. Globally, we have around about 21 facilities around the world, plus a global network of third party uh, sales and authorized service centers. Utilizing our global presence enables us to tailor the technical and commercial aspects of our products to suit your project needs. So Trillium Flow Technologies has a long heritage of innovation spanning over 190 years. We're continually adding new products and services to make our customer processes more efficient and productive. Our latest addition to the Trillium family being red point on the valve side in 2021, providing specialist double block and bleeds, monoflanges, and associated fast track equipment. Recently, in the last few weeks, Trillium has completed a successful acquisition of uh, Thermo Mechanica Pumpo, uh, bringing another worldwide brand uh, to the Trillium portfolio of engineering, engineered solution products. So, uh, quick overview on to the uh, presentation that we'll be running today. So molten salt applications, uh, we'll be giving an overall view of uh, molten salt and specifically in the uh, concentrated solar power or the CSP uh, industry. We'll then be looking at some challenges that molten salt applications uh, give us in that. And then we're going to then turn to uh, the Trillium solutions that we've done to enhance our control valve um, designs. And then at the last part of the uh, presentation, we'll be looking at how we validated some of those improvements that we made. And then very, at the very last part, we'll answer any questions that you have uh, as you uh, go through um, the presentation. So into the presentation, there are various mature power plant designs used, uh, once through boilers, drum boilers, combine cycle, etc. Most plants are designed to burn fossil fuels, oil, natural gas, and coal. All of these plants create pollution that exhaust to atmosphere or have some sort of carbon capture type filtering system. Uh, more recently, we've seen um, that there's been need to replace fossil fuels and uh, go with more green power. And concentrated solar power plants, CSPs, uh, are where is one of these green powers that's been uh, going forward. They have uh, and use a heat transfer fluid, a HTF, which carries heat 
through a series of heat exchangers and transformers feed water to superheated steam. One of these heat transfer fluids um, that we're going to be talking about more in general today is molten salt. So um, these applications of molten salt um, in the industry, they've actually been around for around at least 50 years. And this slide shows a little bit of variety of, of different industries that we see molten salts being used. And just in general, some of those can be aluminium oxide, sodium hydroxide, caustic soda, nitrates, ore leaching, and even heat treatment of metals that all use um, molten salt. On the uh, middle of the screen, you can see a nuclear reactor, uh, which is using uh, a molten salt reactor. And onto the top right, you can also see an integral uh, molten salt reactor, a, a small uh, modular reactor type. The bottom right, uh, we can see a concentrated solar power uh, using molten salt medium. This will be our main focus today regarding the R&D work that uh, Trillium has undertaken to make improvements to our Blakebrook control valves, optimizing our design enhan enhancements to provide a more technical and commercial offering in these applications. So for concentrated solar power plants, there's a, a number of designs, but the most common ones that we see are the solar tower or the parabolic parabolic trough. On the right, you can see the parabolic trough um, and it's uh, designed with a curved reflector where the heat from the solar panel is focused onto the absorber tube. This absorber tube mostly uses synthetic oils as the heat transfer fluid. On the left, you can see the solar tower system, uh, which is more mainly used for higher power, higher temperature systems where the solar heat is concentrated on the solar tower. The mirrors turn according to the angle of the sun, so the energy is constantly focused onto that solar tower. So there are many different fluids uh, that can be applied to solar applications. Synthetic oils have a, a limiting uh, temperature range and can be used to around about 400 degrees. This means that where there's high temperatures of concentrated solar plants are applied, then synthetic oils are not ideal. So molten salt is commonly used for concentrated solar plants. It's an ideal heat capture medium because it maintains a wider operating temperature in a liquid state, allowing the system to operate at low pressure for superior and safe energy capture. The higher temperature absorption capability of molten salts better matches with conventional steam turbines. Molten salt is also a non-toxic, non-flammable, and can therefore be used on applications without special consideration to the environment or environmental safety. When considering valve leakage, obviously oils can generate a fire risk, while molten salt, when cooled, will crystallize, uh, which is generally a little bit safer than a fire risk. Molten salt holds heat, dissipates slower, which effectively means that if, you if your plant is under a cloud cover or it's at night time, then the molten salt can actually give that additional uh, 16 hours of extra steam. So molten salt has a high melting uh, freezing point of 221 to 238 degrees versus synthetic oils of around about 12 to 20 degrees. This means that if the molten salt leaks to atmosphere, then it will start to crystallize. This could ultimately cause uh, issues with the stroking of the valve if it starts to affect the valve and actuator interface. Equally, if the valve cools down below the freezing point, uh, then this can cause blockage of the valve. In order to prevent blockage, then in most cases, the systems are drained during the night, or there can be additional heating strategies that are applied in order to keep the salt molten. A number of those uh, involved in trying to keep the salt molten can be things like heat tracing, insulation, extra heaters, and continuous recycling. There's also been quite a, a deal of, uh, like quite a lot of research over the years into molten salts 
Um, paintants have been specifically developed into fluids that have a goal of reducing that freezing point. Some of those fluids, uh, example on the slide, we've got high tech with freezing point of 142 and a high temperature of about 594 degrees and high tech XL where the freezing point has come down to 120. Um, although you, you don't take the benefit on the high temperature because you're then limited to around 500. Uh, but obviously cost increases as freezing point goes down. So the most common molten salt that's used generally tends to be a sodium nitrate and potassium nitrate solution. So going into a little bit more um, to show a concentrated solar power system, and we can break this into three. So the three sections that we're going to just quickly briefly go over are the collector field, the molten salt system, and then the power power. Yeah. Um, the collector field, this is where the sun's energy is captured and reflected. This part of the plant contains the mirrors along with all the equipment necessary to rotate, adjust them, to allow the maximum concentration of the sun's light onto the specific heating location. Molten salt systems, um, this is where we're going to be, uh, where the reflected light is transferred onto the heat transfer fluid. In this occasion, it's the molten salt. This is where um, the plant contains the receiver and the heat transfer equipment um, that enters into the hot, uh, sorry, the, this is where the plant contains the receiver and heat transfer equipment from the sun to the HTF, along with the equipment which the store to the heat uh, after the sunlight is unavailable. Heat storage uh, is accomplished with two tanks um, in the design. One. Uh, once the HTF leaves the receiver, it enters the hot salt tank, the HST, where it sits until the molten salt uh, pumps move into the uh, power block to generate uh, steam. Once the HTF leaves the steam generation generators, it then enters the cold store tank before it moves back into the receiving tower. Depending on the plant location, and this is all down to the sunlight availability, the tanks will be designed uh, with enough heat capacity so that the plant can operate throughout the night. Essentially, the two tanks are the batteries of the plant during the nighttime and the cloudy days. If the plants are only being designed as peaking units, the tanks will be designed with enough heat capacity to operate during peak hours uh, and there's also enough to keep them, uh, the HTF from, or the molten salt from crystallizing. Uh, to keep the fluid from crystallizing in any part of the loop, then the HTF will continuously circulate. Um, and even if that, even if the uh, plant is not actually generating any electricity. The power block, this is where the heat carries, uh, is carried by the HTF, is transferred to the feed water and steam is generated. This part of the plant contains what would be considered a conventional power plant. The main equipment that will be different from a conventional design is that the heat exchangers, i.e. the steam generators, uh, which must contain the high temperature and pressure of molten salt of around about 70 bar and up to 600 degrees, uh, the heat exchanger would be similar to a shell tube type design Additionally, there would be a steam turbine along with the auxiliary equipment required to generate electricity. To further improve the efficiency of the system, there could be a primary or a secondary uh, superheat, reheat or preheat uh, sections. So what we've done on this slide is we're looking at uh, some of the breakdown of the uh, control valves that you find on a concentrated solar plant. Um, we broke them into three basic groups. We've got the cold molten salt valves and we just need to remember that the cold molten salt is not necessarily um, that cold. It's actually at uh, around about 140 degrees. Uh, we then have the hot molten salt valves which is, um, and you can see some examples there, the recovery outlet and level control valves, the hot tank drains, the steam generation, uh, which specifically 
uh, the valves that we're going to be talking about uh, and some of the solutions uh, will be affected. And then we've got the heat exchanger tank control, which is more yeah. conventional. Yeah. So at, this is a, uh, another schematic. And here we're seeing uh, where the valves that are shown are on the diagram mostly relate to molten salt systems. The red valves are the molten salt ones and the blue ones are the more the conventional plant side. And it's important to contemplate the effect that one valve will have on another from a completely different yeah. system. In the cases of the molten salt valves, uh, must control the flow of the molten salt. And depending on the control of the molten salt, this will have an effect on the heat transfer to the conventional power plant. Therefore, a poor molten salt flow control will affect the quality of the steam generated on the conventional side. If there's too much molten salt flow, then there will be an interstage of temperatures on the conventional side. We'll have to work much harder to control the final steam temperature before we enter that steam turbine. Additionally, the feed water regulator valves must be working together with the molten salt valves to ensure a proper molten salt and feed water ratio is controlled. Otherwise, the risk of the condensate or too high a temperature seam in the steam piping might occur. This then will cause the attemperators to operate more than might be considered normal. So we're now going to look uh, a little bit more deeper into the application challenges that molten salts have on control valves. And Sanket is going to go through these in depth. Over to you, Sanket. Thank you, Graham. So let's have a look at some of the uh, issues that industry faces when using VAR for molten salt application. But before we go ahead uh, in this section, please don't forget to post your questions in chat box or, or a question and answer box. So as you have seen previously, a uh, CSP system divides into five areas. And uh, one of that is a thermal storage system, which consists of two tanks, hot tanks and the cold tank. Uh, fluid from the cold tank is pumped up the solar tower where it gets heated at desired temperature. And once the salt is heated, it passed into the hot tanks and then cycled through the heating system where it converts water into steam and returned to the cold tank. So in this process, customer experience uh, several challenges uh, with molten salt valves. Most of these challenges are attributed to the fundamental need of uh, maintaining a temperature, uh, a minimum temperature around 250 degrees centigrade. And it should be maintained throughout the entire system in order to keep the molten salt uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a fluid state. So for the cold tank system, uh, valve material uh, required to be rated up to 400 degrees centigrade. And the hot tank system, the material uh, should be rated up to 600 degrees centigrade. It is important to note that the molten salt mixture uh, used in these systems becomes very corrosive at temperature in excess of uh, 540 degrees centigrade. So material selection uh, to suit this temperature band is, is quite challenging. And uh, generally, the selection is being done depending on the location of the valve in a piping circuit, such as it's, it is in the cold, cold tank system or it's in the hot tank system, and depending on the valve metal will be selected. So as you see in this slide, uh, uh, we have we have uh, uh, shown you uh, a table which comprises uh, uh, which shows the material for the body bonnet uh, and and the different valve components uh, for the low temperature and the high temperature. So all, all the material all, all the material for the valve used on a molten salt application needs to be considered to ensure longevity of a service life. Uh, due to the cooling and heating effect of the daytime and nighttime operation, the valves are subject to thermal cycling. This means the valve, main, the valve material are subject to thermal stresses, and this could potentially cause leakage or a material failure. And so the material selection should be based on intergranule stress corrosion cracking, uh, grain boundary oxidization, pitting, and spalling. The valve material should be capable of operating over a full range of temperature and also should be able to resist thermal shock associated with the frequent startup and shutdown cycle of the plant. 
So as you see from the table, uh, the body bonnet uh, can be considered in uh, WCB or uh, CF8C, depending on the temperature. Uh, the trim trim could go uh, 316 uh, with the stellite coating on it. Uh, the seals and packing is, 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 is uh, the material selection for seal and packing is a little bit challenging. Uh, but but uh, traditionally used materials such as graphite based uh, product uh, for packing and seals cannot be used on application above uh, 450 degrees C in the areas of oxidation. As the carbon in the graphite starts to react with oxygen forming carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide. So this reaction causes the material to lose mass and dissipate over time. So alternative to graphite must be considered for sealing parts uh, when dealing with a molten salt application. So there are some application uh, regarding, regarding the bonnet as well. So the traditional method to allow uh, the use of standard graphite-based packing uh, and ensure maximum sealing on a corrosive or a hot fluid is by uh, installing a bellow extended bonnet. This design incorporates uh, two sealing technologies as you see on the, on, on, on the image. Uh, the first is the bellow feature uh, and the second uh, is the backup graphite packing, uh, which, is which is furthest uh, from the valve body. The bellow unit is uh, welded to the bottom of the valve stem and then extended up and welded to the sealing ring. So uh, the sealing ring is then sealed between the extended bonnet and the upper bonnet flange. This way, the bellows isolate the molten salt from both the stem and the packing area, therefore ensuring it stays inside the valve body, keeping the packing temperature as low as possible and therefore allow the use of a standard packing design. However, uh, using extended bonnet or a bellow sealed bonnet has its own issues. Uh, when conventional packing are applied to the valve, uh, then potentially any leakage from the packing could cause crystallization above the valve, uh, affecting modulating linear actuation of the stem or uh, results in a seizure of the valve. So the valve applied to the cold and a hot tank uh, uh, could be could be between uh, 10 to 24 inch, depend on the size of the system. But the large size valve comes with a longer stroke to achieve desired CVs. And the bellows applied to these systems, uh, i.e. the larger valve, uh, needs to have a longer stroke. And this becomes challenging uh, to the bellow manufacturer. So if you see on the right hand side image, the bellow can be supplied in a segmented arrangement. So bellow seal bonnet uh, or extended bonnet have been proven to be suitable for a molten salt application, but this solution has a big impact on the valve height. If you see in the, in the, in the, in the center picture, uh, the extended bonnet, uh, the valve with extended bonnet has shown and it has, it has uh, uh, the height is, 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 is really consideration in this, this size of the valve. It also uh, add additional weight to the valve and the piping, piping system, and therefore it needs additional structure. So the valve height uh, uh, is, 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 is an issue if we go for a, a bellow seal bonnet or extended bonnet. Then the bellow seal bonnet requires a, a periodic maintenance based on the cycle and the moment ratio. Also the turbulent flow can effectively get trapped and create problem in the valve operation. So as you see, using the bellow seal bonnet can allow the use of standard packing material uh, such as graphite, but due to the bonnet design, it introduced challenges in using the valve for longer duration. The heat tracing could also be a challenge uh, uh, in, 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 in the molten salt, when the valve is used in a molten salt application. Uh, so to keep the salt in a fluid state, uh, heating strat strategies are applied. So uh, Graham has explained the different strategies before. And the most common one is the heat tracing of the valve. Uh, molten salts start to solidify at around 230 degrees centigrade, but due to the high latent heat capacity of the salt, the phase transfer from solid to liquid is not an instantaneous process. And due to which solid block of salt gets generated and can flow down the pipeline blocking of the valve, pumps, heat exchanger, and other process critical flow equipment. And one of the main concern we have identified that valve will effectively cool down the molten salt as it flows through as it flows through into the valve cavities and eventually causing pockets of solidification and therefore heat tracing uh, is, is required uh, is essential uh, to keep the molten salt in fluid state and to avoid uh, crystallizing the salt so as I mentioned earlier, uh, a selection of packing material is limited due to the high packing degradation rate in a molten salt application. 
and wrong selection of packing and inadequate heat tracing can cause serious problems such as seizure of the valve, uh, frequent valve maintenance uh, requirement, unscheduled uh, process downtime, or even health and safety issues. So if you see on the right-hand side image, um, uh, there is a salt built up around the valve, uh, uh, which, could, which could definitely cause seizure of the valve. Uh, or, or if you focus on the center image, uh, there is a, uh, the leakage showing from the valve, uh, which could cause unscheduled process downtime, or it could even cause a serious health and safety issues. So overall, it has been identified that uh, salt entrapment and subsequent solidification is a major cause for concern with application of this nature. And our customer uh, continue to innovate with the limited products at their disposal in order to mitigate the shortfall in a current product design. Trillium Engineering UK has addressed these issues and offered innovative solution to the industry. So I will hand over to Graham to discuss uh, 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 the solutions uh, that we have found uh, to address these issues. So uh, over to you, Graham, now. Thank you, Sanket. So um, to overcome some of the mentioned problems, um, the following uh, design alterations have been taken. So. Um, as outlined previously, salt entrapment in the flow profile is really problematic if the uh, valve falls below the salt crystallization temperature. During operation, solid salt breaks off and causes damage and blockage uh, happens in the, the pipeline and, uh, and can affect critical flow equipment. From uh, the flow profile perspective, we have implemented some design alterations, uh, such as we've removed all cavities and wells, um, and therefore we've actually smoothed out the flow profile in the valve. Uh, we've added some uh, adequate uh, slope. And if you look on the right-hand side drawing, you can see that there is a four degree slope in there, uh, which we've introduced. We've also, for the cage hole, is around 3.75 uh, millimeters from the flow path to ensure uh, minimum uh, entrapment of the salt can occur. Um, and if you look at the center picture, we've added now drain drainage ports uh, to the globe valves uh, have been added um, so that they can be used when needed, um, maybe on nighttime or when there's, uh, they just need to be drained out. So uh, looking at the flow path of a valve cage, it's, all been, it's also been investigated uh, to identify the minimum of a five millimeter diameter hole, uh, which can be achieved to, to still allow a finer flow of control uh, without choking. Uh, and there was a bit of research um, done on that, which we'll be going on to in the verification. Uh, the C seal installed in the flow over position uh, even when the valve operates in the flow under direction. Um, with this design alteration, we found that the sea steel still can be self-energized and also ensures that the salt is not entrapped within the seal. So from a heat, a heat tracing perspective, Trillium Flow Technologies has implemented um, the following uh, adaptations. The body and bonnet redesign for a simple heat tracing installation. So basically the bonnet design is selected to the operating temperature and the process fluid for higher and lower temperatures and normalizing bonnet um, is used to lift the packing away from the main process flow. The normalized bonnet also allows for space uh, to allow for lagging and the bonnet can be designed without the cooling fins. So no cooling fins, then no major restriction for heat tracing. Uh, for the extended bonnet, even in conventional packing can be applied in that case. However, Trillium is one of the leading control valve manufacturers to have uh, proven packing suitability uh, to enable us to go without bellows. Um, and we will again be going through the verification tests on how we prove that out. So um, going a little bit into that sealing um, change that we've done there. So the control valve stem operates in a modulating linear actuation. Uh, typically in a molten salt application, the valve fully opens in the morning and closes during the night. So the packing would uh, be, have to be capable of handling linear actuation in high temperatures, such as in this case, molten salt. 
uh, we worked with the, uh, a number of sealing manufacturing companies and came up with a unique composition of material that can handle this aggressive service condition. Uh, the material has been proven suitable for static sealing, um, gastric application and can be used as a filler material within Canel uh, to make standard size spiral wound gaskets. From a packing perspective, the material can be used where the valve operates only maybe once or twice a year, but, but it must obviously have the uh, required um, planned maintenance to avoid any leakage through the stem. Alternatively, we tested and validated special high temperature packing materials, which give longevity in the service proven uh, to be suitable for aggressive conditions, especially where uh, resistance to high temperature media, such as molten salt, uh, as well as extended dynamic sealing performance is required. Thus, from those um, trials, we've been able to uh, utilize a bellows, uh, bellowless bonnet design, which obviously um, is a much more commercial advantage. So I'm going to hand you back over to Sanka, who's uh, going to take some of those design alterations and look at the verification work that we did to uh, prove out those design changes. All right, thank you, Graham. So uh, coming to the validation of the solutions, uh, we basically conducted two thermal uh, CFD studies on a control uh, globe valve to understand hot and cold spot, uh, hot and cold spot uh, on, on, on the valve assembly and to identify thermal location. So as you have, as you have seen so far, uh, the temperature control uh, of, uh, of the valve when it's used in a molten salt application is very, very critical uh, to, for, for the performance of the valve. <clears throat> so that's why we basically conducted a CFD study to identify uh, the change in a temperature uh, when, when, the, when the molten salt flows through it. Uh, we also uh, uh, we also studied uh, two uh, different trim configuration uh, uh, a simple contoured solid plug design uh, which basically requires high actuation load and a multi flow trim uh, with a balanced plug design uh, that reduces uh, the actuator load requirement so we were looking for uh, effect of trim design on a temperature change as the trim could choke the flow which could affect the heat transfer in the valve assembly so we conducted transient analysis uh, showing molten salt at 300 degrees centigrade uh, flowing through the non-insulated valve uh, at an ambient temperature. And as expected, uh, the study shows that the areas of the valve uh, that have a large volume to surface ratio take the longest to warm up and uh, area of the valve that are non in a contact, not in a contact uh, with the molten salt, such as the packing area remain relatively cool, uh, uh, reaching approximately 60% of the maximum fluid temperature. So uh, did, uh, from, from, from the CFD study, uh, we found the trim design, uh, uh, i.e. Uh, contour trim uh, and the multi-flow trim has a very little effect on the temperature transfer. Uh, along with the, along with the uh, 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 CFD study for identifying the hot and cold spot, uh, uh, we, the, the valve also, we have also performed a cool down analysis of the valve uh, and which showed the trim component uh, remained at a high temperature uh, compared to the valve shell. This means that the molten salt has more time to drain uh, from the trim part uh, and less likely to form large crystal as the salt solidifies. But as, molt, as, as the molten salt is a very dynamic, um, uh, uh, the molten salt application is a very, very dynamic in nature, uh, the some minor uh, surfaces and localized, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, localized crystallization will still to be expected on, on, on some areas of the valve, but which is a minor and, and does not cause any problem uh, with the valve performance. Along with the CFD, we also performed a set of calculation to identify uh, power required for heat tracing uh, to keep the valve about 250 degrees centigrade. So as you have seen so far, heat tracing is quite an important element uh, when the valve is used in a molten salt application. And a different uh, power required for a different size of valve. If you go for extended bonnet design, uh, you will need a different sort of heat tracing, different size of the valve, different class of the valve. We need different power to keep it uh, warm uh, for, for that desired temperature. 
uh, and we did we did uh, perform the validation of the heat tracing calculation as well. We uh, uh, experimentally tested a six inch uh, class six hundred valve uh, to validate uh, the, the, the the heat transfer calculations. So as you see on this uh, slide is, is give you basically an overview of the test we conducted on, on a molten salt application. So in order to validate the design alteration, uh, we tested the valve at our UK site, uh, as well as at our third party test house. Uh, if you see the first three tests, we conducted more like an integrity test uh, at, a, at an ambient temperature. Uh, those we were conducted at, uh, at, at a UK site, uh, whereas the, the third party test, uh, whereas the test at a, at a uh, operating conditions using a molten salt fluid uh, we conducted at uh, at a third party test house so if you see from the from from the pressure and temperature uh, pressure and temperature ranges we basically tested the valve at uh, 40 bar uh, 249 bar and then looking from the temperature point of view we tested from 250 degree c to 565 degree c for a different duration at a different pressure and we also did perform a cyclic cyclic test uh, uh, which which confirm uh, the stem packing performance. And as you can see from the results, all, all the tests have uh, been passed successfully. Uh, this, basically, uh, this basically proves uh, that, that the design alteration we did uh, is working in, in, in the design condition. So let's look at uh, a little bit deeper into the testing side. Now, on this slide, you basically see uh, on the left-hand side picture, the valve is installed uh, in the flow loop and uh, you can see uh, there is a different um, instrumentation has been installed on the loop to get the different, uh, to, to get the pressure and the temperature at different areas of the flow loop. Uh, and the entire flow loop and the valve has also been insulated to keep the temperature constant throughout the system. Uh, on the right hand side image, you can see uh, the location of the thermo well where we basically uh, measuring the temperature of the valve uh, and that is basically uh, uh, is, 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 is been validated against the CFD study what we did and the heat transfer uh, calculation. So the first test uh, we did was uh, checking integrity of the valve assembly at design condition. So we conducted the test at a 550 degree centigrade uh, at 40 bar. Uh, and as you can see from the result, uh, if you follow the orange line uh, on the graph, uh, that pressure and temperature remain steady for the duration of the test. After the test, uh, as a usual practice, uh, we inspect the valve thoroughly and we did not found any damage to the valve component. So this basically proves that uh, uh, all the design alteration and, and, and the integrity, integrity of the valve is, is uh, suitable for the design conditions. The integrity test uh, we perform. Uh, uh, we perform. We, we, we did the test uh, to verify cold zone on the valve, um, as 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 it is the area of a concern uh, for crystallization of a molten salt. So uh, this test was uh, also ensured that area of the valve uh, needed to be heat traced uh, during the application. So obviously, I mean, if we, if you see any cold zones, uh, we basically need to put more uh, heat tracing around that area. So this has been verified during this test. So as you have seen previously that we have performed CFD to address these issues. Uh, and uh, during the CFD study, we predicted uh, upper valve body section we will cool down faster uh, due to the reduced thermal inertia in that section of the body. So to validate the CFD study, we conducted experimental test uh, on a six inch valve. And as you can see from this graph, if you follow the blue line, uh, which shows the temperature of the upper body, uh, uh, the upper body gets cooled down very quickly compared to other part of the other part of the valve, uh, such as the, the, the lower body and the bonnet. So basically this validates our uh, CFD study and, uh, and the prediction for the, for the heat, tracing, uh, heat tracing power. After the, valid, after the validation of the cold spot, uh, we conducted leakage test. Uh, uh, again, this, this was conducted under the design condition. So again, for this test, a uh, valve was set at a closed position and heated up to 500 degrees centigrade. And then the valve uh, was pressurized up to, uh, up to 40, 45 bar. Uh, then we let the temperature settle at uh, 400 degrees centigrade and hold the pressure uh, for 30 minutes. So for the period of the test, there was no pressure loss uh, from the valve. So uh, basically we did not see any leakage from, from, from the gasket area. We did not see any leakage from the stem packing side. Uh, so that basically uh, uh, proves that the valve is, is uh, I mean, the packings and the gasket sealing is working for that uh, uh, particular condition. So after the test duration, uh, we opened the valve uh, and which results a sudden decrease in the upstream pressure. 
so as you see on the right hand side, if you follow the orange line, uh, it, it, it can show where we opened the valve. Uh, and uh, during this, and this, sorry, that's that's the fire alarm goes in our office. Yeah, sorry for that. So during this uh, during this test, uh, uh, cyclic test, uh, we did not find any any leakage from the packing or a gasket joint, and thus passed the leakage uh, test of the valve. So once we have gained some confidence on the valve integrity and, and the leakage, uh, we, said, we decided to go for a cyclic test. Uh, we set the valve at a design condition uh, at a 500 degree centigrade at a 40 bar. And then we performed 2000 cycles at one minute per cycle. So in other words, basically we fully open and close the valve for 2000 times. Uh, at the end of the test, we did not see any leakage from the stem packing. Uh, so, uh, uh, or, or uh, stem packing or from a gasket joint, thus the valve passed the cyclic test. Uh, then we went up to 4,000 cycles, and as I, and, and as I explained before, uh, in general, the application of the molten salt, the valve opens in the morning and closes in the night. Uh, that is one cycle per day, which equates uh, 10 years of leak-free valve, uh, as long as treatment services and maintenance has been followed. So, you have seen uh, you have seen the issues in the in in in, in, the, in the using the valve in a molten salt application, and then uh, you have seen what what solution that we have came up with to address those issues, and then we uh, we tested those issues, and some of them are related to flow profile. Uh, we basically avoid any uh, any and we basically eliminate all the cavities or wells. Uh, to avoid any, uh, any any pockets for the salt crystallization. We have looked at the sea seal arrangement as well. Uh, and we came up with a solution that it must be designed in a flow over position where we can avoid a crystallization again. Uh, we did also verify the cold zones of the cold zone areas in the valve. Uh, uh, the, we basically can be, cold zone can be avoided by heat tracing and what's the power needed and that has been validated again. Uh, we have also tested non-bellow design. Uh, uh, which is which is which is uh, uh, we think is the way forward because it eliminates a lot of issues uh, uh, relating to the extended bonnet and a velo seal bonnet, uh, and we did also look at the sealing as well, uh, which proves that which proves during the leakage test and and the cyclic test. So if you see in the in the bottom table, uh, it gives the overall view of the of, of the material that we can use uh, on this valve uh, for the low temperature application or a high temperature application. So the test results allow us to offer our customer a solution based uh, on the cage guarded or a contour trim uh, with no bellows that will last uh, for almost 4,000 cycles, which is 1,000 cycle extra than the most optimal bellow solution. A reliable solution for the molten salt application that we believe outperform, uh, 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 outperform our competitor solution. So as you see from this slide, uh, we have came up with a solution which is tested and verified, and we believe that uh, this is this is a better performing valve uh, when it's used in a molten salt application. So that's where we end our today's webinar. Uh, thank you so much uh, for attending this session, and uh, let's move on to the question. Right. Okay, so uh, we've got two or three questions in. If if you want to get a question in now, this is the time to do it. Um, but I'll read out what we've got so far, and uh, hopefully we can we can answer them. So the first one, um, when redesigning the flow path to remove pockets through the body, has the valve CV suffered in any way? Uh, the quick answer to that, uh, no, the valve CV did not suffer. Uh, it did not reduce or anything. However, uh, we found it as it is, it is, it is improved a bit because as you see, if you remove the cavities, if you remove the wells, you're basically eliminating the restriction for the flow, uh, which means it's a smoother profile for the for the for the any fluid to flow, and at it and it, it it gives the better flow characteristics. So, so the quick answer: it did not uh, uh, suffer the CV with the with the with the flow profile design changes. Okay, thank you for that, Sanke. Um, mm -hmm. Another question we've had is: how long has uh, Blakeberg Blake control valves been supplying into the molten salt? Uh, market. Um, I, I have a go at answering this one. Um, mm -hmm. We've actually got quite a bit of history um, going back to the 1970s for a, a Monsantana uh, project, I believe. 
So uh, we have quite a bit of history, but obviously a lot of the work's been done very recently uh, in those design enhancements. Um, another question we have is uh, how attractive would the new um, design be of the bellow less bonnet instead of bellows arrangements? Um, that really is depending on uh, the sizing that we do. So um, that one really, uh, obviously with larger sizes, with um, removing that uh, bellows bonnet makes a substantial saving. So giving a hard fixed figure is a little bit difficult, but um, let's just say it doesn't matter what size it is, you're getting a good proportional saving by doing that. Okay, and I've got one other question. Um, how easy will this solution be implemented by customers? Sanke, I wonder if you could uh, answer on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, what, what we have seen is, is, is using a bellow seal bonnet is, is basically a, a standard practice uh, is, is, is in, in mo most of the molten salt application. Uh, and basically uh, at the first customer might think uh, going for a bellowless bonnet because uh, due to the due to the you know uh, the performance of the valve however we have tested and validated the solution uh, which gives a confidence that uh, uh, a bellowless bonnet solution can be considered and it is it is probably the most cost effective solution uh, in the, in the molten salt application regarding the other design modification uh, which is basically down to the engineering which is which is straightforward uh, uh, design modifications and uh, uh, the customer is is not really really not uh, uh, should be worried about those uh, uh, design modifications uh, however the heat tracing element is the quite critical and as long as the heat tracing is maintained adequate uh, uh, and avoid the crystallization of the salt the performance of the valve will not degrade uh, over the time so in a short answer, it's very easy to implement these solutions uh, by the customer, and we don't we don't anticipate any any major issues. Okay, another question come in. Uh, any heat tracing experience on other types of valves, molten salt, so check valves and butterfly valves. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, the, we can we can perform the heat tracing. Uh, we, we have a standard set of calculations, and uh, we can perform this heat tracing for the other valves too if it is required. Uh, uh, but again, I mean it is as per the requirement, uh, the application of the valve. So it can be deal with it can be uh, dealt with a case by case basis. But it can be done uh, without an without a doubt. So that is a possibility there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, last question that we have is from a maintenance point, how easy and how often should the packings be changed? Uh, so we have, as, as you have seen, we have tested this valve for a, for, for, for a 2000 cycle and we went up to 4000 cycle and we did not see any, any, um, any major issues. But again, uh, it, it, it is the test we did at a certain design condition. So it depends on the valve used in a, in a particular uh, uh, particular set of uh, conditions. Uh, for it, it depends on a different plant, uh, the plant uh, infrastructure and uh, things like that. So on a normal term, uh, we did we did recommend like you know every after two years or you know the valve could be serviced or if if you follow the the trillium uh, recommended uh, service and maintenance uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, then, 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 then the packing should last longer, uh, and it gives the same valve performance. Okay, I, I think that's all the questions that we've had in Sanket. So, uh, mm -hmm. for myself, thank you for everybody uh, that's joined. Uh, Sanket, last few words. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much for joining today. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.